Composting can be tough. A lot of people don't enjoy it. They think it's a bunch of work. You gotta turn the pile. You gotta get the right mix of browns and greens and that's a pain and how hot should it be and all that stuff. Well, when you build the Johnson Sioux bioreactor like this, you don't have to worry about any of that. These two have been in operation for a few months. Let's find out how they're working out. Sneak peek, I love them. What are my first thoughts? I love them. I love every thing about them. They make composting so easy. Well, what's so great about them? Number one, you don't have to turn them and there's no smells and they're not going to go anaerobic. So that's a huge advantage right there. You build them, you fill them. The work from there is essentially done until you empty them. If you compare that to a traditional aerated composting pile, you're turning that every two weeks, maybe every month. There's work involved there, whether with you or equipment, this takes the work out of it. The second thing I really love is they are contained and they're big and they go vertical. If you think about, say, a static pile on the ground, static piles on the ground, they're great. You don't have to turn them, so no work there. But the thing is, you can really only make a pile so big before it starts to spread out. You can only go so high before it starts to spread out because the material only wants to hold on to a certain amount of slope. So you end up with kind of a lot of wasted vertical space when you make a conical pile. Well, the physical structure of the Johnson Sioux bioreactor solves that. You could essentially make these as tall as you wanted, assuming they're stable, assuming they're strong enough and they're not wasting any vertical space because we have a true cylinder that's supported on the outside. We can just fill it up and let it go. So I love the fact that in a four foot by four foot footprint, we have a five foot tall pile of compost. So no space, that's great. Since I created that build video, I've gotten a lot of questions on them. I've also talked to Dr. David Johnson about these bioreactors. Some of the common questions that I've gotten along the way are, could you build this and slowly fill it up? And the answer is yes, you could build one and slowly fill it up. In fact, I'm gonna be doing that coming up in a future video. The other two most common questions that I've gotten are what about the worms and what about the water? I'm gonna show you the watering system and we're gonna actually add the worms to these reactors today. For my irrigation timer, this is what I'm using. This is the Orbit 62061N timer. This is by far my favorite garden timer on the market. It goes for about $30 at hardware stores or online. I love them, they're super reliable. Mine have been in service for years. Take two AA batteries that seem to last forever. And you can set it on like really small increments. So you could have it water for three hours or you could have it water for one minute a day. And that's really critical with these reactors because you're not gonna wanna put a lot of water into these reactors on a daily or semi-daily basis. So the fact that you can set them for one, two, three, four, five, ten 10 minutes increments is great. If you are gonna get a timer for your reactor, make sure that you get one that allows you to change the frequency, how often, and make sure you can do it for you know some amount less than 15 minutes at a time because these reactors don't require a lot of water. For the drip line, this is what I'm using, 12 inch spacing, 100 gallon per hour drip line. There's nothing special about this. Use whatever you had. This is what I had around, so that's why I used it. There isn't a right answer here. You just need drip line inside of the reactors. Don't get caught up on the brand or the spacing or anything like that. Just get drip line. When laying out the drip line, I really tried to keep it simple. I just ran a line around the inside perimeter of the reactor, and I also crossed it twice against the center. The whole goal was just trying to get, you know, representative coverage to try and keep most of the area wet. And this was the simplest way to do it, using the least amount of fittings and the fittings that I actually had on hand. Again, there's no right way to do this, so don't overcomplicate it. The whole key here is you don't want to see water draining out the bottom of the composter. If you see that, then you're adding too much water. One other feature that I added to the system was a flow control switch going between the first and second reactor. That way I can turn off water to the second reactor if I ever wanted to do so while still being able to water the first. These are in series. So if you have multiple reactors that you're watering, think about how you're getting water to each of them. Are you in parallel? Are you in series? And can you turn off water to each and any individual reactor if needed? might be important, yet it might not be. Again, don't overthink it. So I love the system, but how's it working? So far, based on outside observation, it looks like it's working pretty well. The reactors initially were filled up to the tippy top. 
Now they're about down to here, so they've dropped anywhere between 12 and 15 inches on first estimate. Digging the hole for the worms, we can get a little sneak peek into what's going on inside the pile itself, and this is what it looks like. It looks pretty good. I mean, obviously there's still a lot of visual wood chips there, but it feels moist, so it lets me know the hand watering I've been doing on a semi-daily basis has kept the pile moist. I'm seeing a few little bits of things like mycelium right here in the pile, so it's looking good. In terms of the temperature of each reactor, they're at about a stable 80 degrees Fahrenheit, which I think is a good temperature because that's kind of the optimal temperature range for fungal decomposition you know, in the 70 to 80 degree range. If it was hotter, we'd be expecting more bacterial decomposition, which we really shouldn't have at this point in the process because all of the easy to consume nitrogen is long gone and it's really the fungi doing the work now. And that's a really important takeaway for anybody looking to build one of these reactors. These are a fungal decomposition reactor. You are encouraging the fungi to do most of the breakdown, at least in the long term. The bacteria initially come in, digest everything that's easy in the beginning, and then you just let the reactor sit and sit and sit over time, probably at least a year if not longer, for the fungi to break everything down within the system. And Dr. David Johnson has various charts showing that over time, the diversity of fungi within each reactor increases and the amount of fungi within each reactor increases. So the longer you sit, kind of the richer the brew you're going to get out of it at the end of the day, more fungi and more varieties of fungi. One other important step in building a Johnson 2 bioreactor is adding worms to the system. Now I'm adding worms to my system a few months later. David suggests adding them a few days later after the pile has cooled down to about 80 degrees. Why didn't I add them back then? Very simple reason. I didn't have enough worms back then. I just didn't have any compost bins that were worm rich to source the worms. I didn't want to buy them. I also kind of figured, well, I have wood chips in here. It's not like leafy debris. I don't want to put a bunch of worms into just straight up wood chips. I didn't think they had a good chance of surviving. So I needed to let the worm population you know, expand itself out. And I also needed to let this pile break down a little bit more before I added the worms. So now we're going to be adding the worms to the pile. When adding the worms to your reactor, there's no right way, there's no wrong way. Pretty simple. Dig a hole, pour the worms in, cover the worms up, and we're good to go. Let the worms go wherever they want within the pile. I don't think it's important to add these to several spots. My thought is add them all to one spot in a hyper concentration so they have a better chance of surviving in the pile versus putting a few worms in a few spots around the pile. The last and final step in completing the reactor is I'm going to be adding landscape fabric to the top of the reactor. This should just keep some sunlight off the soil surface, which should help the worms establish themselves. It should also slow down evaporation a little bit from the top for all the water that we're now adding to the system. And this is the same exact landscape fabric that we used around the sides and on the bottom of the reactor. To keep the landscape fabric from blowing away, you can simply just tuck it into the wire mesh of the structure itself. One final thought I want to leave you with. It's now late August, early September timeframe. The end of the gardening season is coming near for a lot of people. That means a lot of plants are going to come out of the garden. There's going to be a lot of waste. What are you going to do with that waste? Why not put that waste into a bioreactor and compost it for the winter so you can use it in your garden next year or the following year? You can find instructions on how to build the bioreactor below in the description. You can also see a link to a build video that I did right here and below. And I'll also have a very short form version of how to build a bioreactor coming up on this channel in the very near future. So stay tuned for that. But think about it. End of the gardening season, time to build your bioreactor so it's ready to receive all that garden waste when you start to shut the garden down or at least transition it over to winter crops. So get building, have fun with it, enjoy it, and stay tuned also on this channel for an interview with the guy who actually created these reactors, Dr. David Johnson, coming up in a few weeks right here on this channel. Thanks for watching everybody. Until next time, be nice, be thankful, and do the work.